Hello everyone, I welcome you all to my new lecture which is on Poetry A Note On Ontology by John Croy Ransom. In Poetry A Note On Ontology, John Croy Ransom has divided poetry into three main parts. The three parts are physical poetry, platonic poetry and metaphysical poetry. Among these three forms of poetry, Ransom personally favored the metaphysical poetry as the best form of poetry. As we all know, Ransom was a critic of new criticism. Therefore, he denounces biographical and moral criticism. So, let's move further. Ransom said that to make criticism text self-sufficient, there is no need to point out the historical background and personal impressions since the text is autonomous. So, this saying is very obvious as we know that Ransom was the critic of New Criticism era and the critics of New Criticism era always supported text as the self-sufficient medium to criticize any text. So, they, you know, somehow favored the closed reading. So, that is what Ransom is also doing. So, let's move further. So, what is physical poetry? Now, let's start studying it. According to Ransom, in physical poetry, poet uses physical things, objects, for the matter of their poetry. In this kind of poetry, importance is given to material and surface appearance, not to the idea. In this kind of poetry, poet uses plain, literal and scientific language and diction. The poet tries to express words to represent these physical things. To this kind of poetry, Ransom considered simple, which is based on physical and visible sensory things. This poetry is considered too realistic according, according to Ransom, and he does not consider it perfect form of poetry. That's why Ransom was against this kind of poetry. Examples of few physical poems are Sea Poppies and Hilda Doolittle. So what is physical poetry? Physical poetry is a poetry which is dependent upon things which are, you know, which can be touched and uh, the objects, you know, which we can see and touch. So his poetry was, sorry, physical poetry was dependent upon this thing. So uh, this poetry gives naturally the importance to surface appearance, you know, how the thing is looking and that it expresses in words and the poetry uses simple, plain, scientific language and diction. So, Ransom considered this kind of poetry as too idealistic and uh, I'm, I mean to say that this kind of poetry is, you know, which represents only things. So, he was not in the favor of this kind of poetry. Next, he defines platonic poetry. And he says that platonic poetry only depends upon ideas. So, he completely disregards, you know, this kind of poetry. And he says that they completely disregard, you know, things and objects which, you know, somehow we have studied that physical poetry try to do. So, they completely omit this thing. So, he says that this kind of poetry is too realistic. He further gives the example of romantics and tells that romantics used this kind of poetry to express their poems, such as Alfred Lord Tennyson and John Keats. He gives the example of a poem, Ode on Gratianon, where there is no direct relation between the o, between the urn and the poem, but the poem is completely representation of ideas. But the poet uses on to express his ideas. So, that is what platonic poets used to do. They express their ideas, but by using some objects, you know, by in the form, they will show objects, but they use their mere ideas. There will be no relation of that material in their poetry. So, that is what uh, John Croy Ransom is trying to point out in platonic poetry. And uh, he further says that this poetry uh, according to him is 
uh, the poetry which expresses philosophical truth and morality this poetry destroys image and takes reader to imagination so that's why he considered it too idealistic and abstract in nature due to all these facts he completely you know disregards this kind of poetry as the perfect form of poetry so next we will study metaphysical poetry metaphysical physical poetry according to ransom was the best form of poetry in this kind of poetry there the poet tries to you know give uh, tries to blend give blend of feeling and reason heart and mind emotion and intellect for example this kind of poetry is used by john donne and andrew marvel so and further he tells that poet uses conceit metaphor to express his intelligence the conceit metaphor is the metaphor which is used by john donne and andrew marvel and in this metaphor they express you know thing which is you know beyond the you know the sensory uh, you know sensory and physical experience of a reader so we can understand it by uh, taking an example uh, of a poem by john dun valediction a forbidden morning in this he expresses lovers with the point of compass which are distant from each other but they are combined at the topmost part of compass you know which combines two points so he is trying to express that whether they are different whether they are you know distant from each other but they are the one soul they are the one they have the one heart and their love is increasing by the distance which they both are you know which in which they both are and he tries to explain that this is making them their love more pure so that is what he is trying to explain in this poem so let's move further what he uh, you know further says we will see this so uh, that's why he you know personally favored the metaphysical part of this me metaphysical poetry because it uh, expresses both uh, using metaphor conceit Uh, such as physical and platonic aspects of poetry so that's why he favors the metaphysical poetry so let's move further in his note he further tells about criticism so he tells two type of criticism psychological and moral psychological criticism tends to be scientific and that's why he goes outside the text and uh, that's why uh, this criticism fails because it starts using the biography of other writers so that's why this criticism fails next he talks about moral criticism moral criticism tends to pre prescribe rules and ideologies but if we will take rules and ideologies then also we will go beyond the text because we need to take rules and ideologies from our ancestors so that is why according to him this criticism is also not enough so he says that both these criticism go beyond the text and that's why these criticism are not sufficient and unified whole so he criticizes those both criticism so further he tells about structure which is considered as paraphrase core and texture in a text in a poetry okay so he tells that the both structure and texture are very important for a poetry and they you know they are they are interact they are you know combined uh, with each other and separation of these both uh, structure and texture is impossible and he stresses interaction between them is what important is so uh, that is what he tries to tell in these kind of textures which he is which he is trying to explain in his note so that is what he tried to explain in texture and structure okay let's move further so now he comes upon the discourse of poetry and he tells two type of discourse poetic discourse and second one is scientific discourse so he personally favors poetic discourse because poetic discourse is democratic and many interpretations can be possible of this kind of discourse so he 
says that this discourse is not so authoritative and that is the reason why this uh, discourse is you know forward or you can say you can go further you know you know you can take uh, it one place you know above then scientific discourse because there can be multiple interpretation possible with the help of a text yet he uh, he you know accepts that it does not gives a single interpretation that but he says that does not means that the discourse is not okay so further he tells about scientific discourse according to ransom scientific discourse is uh, the discourse which only uh, promotes one single meaning of a text the ransom does not support single meaning of a text therefore he does not accept scientific discourse necessary for criticism so because it you know gives single uh, meaning scientific discourse so that's why he criticizes this kind of discourse because according to him single meaning of a text can you know can make the text limited so that's why he personally does not favor scientific criticism scientific i'm sorry discourse so ransom personally favors poetic discourse but disregards criticizing from earlier views that is also important that uh, if we are using scientific if you if uh, i'm sorry if we are using poetic discourse then also we have to be you know according to present views you know according to uh, our views we should not criticize from earlier views so let's move further so at last we will you know try to quote we will try to understand with the quote of uh, john crowe ransom which is if some conventions are repeated there would be no progress in literature so good critics should possess innovation experiment and new techniques that is what he tells in his uh, in his note that we should not uh, possess the uh, possess the conventions you know uh, which are you know given by old you know critics or writers because if we want progress in literature then we need to you know do innovation experiment and then take new techniques so that is what he tries to explain in his uh, uh, note poetic uh, poetry a note on ontology and i hope that uh, i i will be clear to you and it will be clear to you that uh, what he is trying to explain um, important ideologies in his note so thank you very much if you liked my video you can like it and you can subscribe to my channel for further notifications so thank you very much bye bye